for you from the last guest was, have you ever shat yourself on stage? <laughs> <laughs> the no. quality of the podcast that you're about to get in for. <laughs> um, <laughs> I did say I hope the answer was no. So um, there you go. Well, yeah. thank you. Who was that again? That was Megan from Vexed. Quite cool. I don't know if you know them. <laughs> cool band. But I think, yeah, no. so that was, I've had some, lots of food related ones, but that was the, <laughs> that was the opener. I, I've, we had lots of profound conversations and then, uh, and then that was the, it seems to be the more profound the conversation, the, the more ridiculous the first question. So I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad you didn't have to elaborate on that because, well, yes would have made for an interesting start to the podcast. Um, but, uh, I have yeah. had a friend who shut themselves on stage. Really? Can yeah, you say who um, or is it? Uh, do they not like you? Do you not not like you? Oh uh, no, he's one of he's one of my best friends. Um, he's in one of my bands, but he's, oh, yeah. he's a vocalist, and he um he definitely told me a story about where he was on stage and he just did a big stamp. Oh no! Whether he was singing or screaming or um or he was just you know just grooving out. Um, yeah, he <laughs> he thought he ripped a fart, but he's he was like, oh, oh no. wait a minute. And then after the show, I think he realized. Was this so, like a big show or? Um, no, nah, probably was just at a local club or something. Oh, okay. But um, but yeah, he uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I feel like happens. local show is actually almost worse because it's like there's less people in the room. Like you're gonna notice. <laughs> at least if you're on like you're playing to like ten thousand people, you, no one's gonna see you. They're too far away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, on that serious note, to start this wonderful conversational journey um um i've obviously i've kind of um i've re- I was, before i have every sort of um uh before i chat to everyone i kind of think about like okay what do i want to what do i think would be interesting an interesting topic of conversation um and i'm guessing um i'm guessing something that a question that you'd get probably quite a lot um at, given the nature of your band i'm guessing there must be quite a lot of people who go that's great. Have you thought about putting some guitar on there? Or have you thought about putting a singer on there? Something like that. I'm guessing that's, have you had that question? I'm guessing that's something that people kind of, or not question or sort of, I know we get a lot of sort of punters trying to tell us how, how we could improve our band. And it's kind of like, sometimes it's nice and sometimes it's just a bit unwelcome. And is that a question that you ever get at all or? Yeah. Or quite, I mean, not a happens... question, but a statement so much, so much. Yeah, uh, there was, yeah, it was a really funny one that I can't think of right now. But we got, yeah. we got that quite a bit, you know, just from, I guess, walk-ins and stuff when we started the band, or, yeah. uh, or even like you know, um, like parents, friends, or something like that, being just incredibly confused by the fact that we don't have a vocalist or mm. the guitar thing doesn't usually come up too much. Okay, That's usually yeah, just yeah. on like YouTube comments or something, and it's just like yeah, yeah. whatever, dude. But, well, um, YouTube comments obviously are the most important thing to judge your whole life's work by. So, oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I do not. I take a very active. Uh, I, t- I take a very active thought process to not read into those because that. I I do not blame yeah. you at all. Yeah, that's. I think that is the way to do it. Really, yeah. Um, but yes, because I I think that the thing. So the reason I was asking that was because um we slightly different kind of um uh slightly different kind of vibe but um we write quite like it's like metal but it's fairly accessible like you know if you played it on an acoustic and we have done it it, it, you know anyone could kind of listen to it it's not like uh it's clean vocals and all that and a question we always get is like something along the lines of commercializing it a little bit you know about like have you thought about just taking some riffs out or like you know being a bit more He's not easy on the ears, but like um, going down a more commercial route. And I find it quite frustrating that it's like, it's it's almost kind of, I don't think people realize it does kind of sort of invalidate what you're trying to do. And it's like, um, have you found it difficult to kind of try and forge a path with a band that is doing something quite different and, and sort of to try and avoid those, the haters in that way? Well, I, I don't think you'd ever avoid avoid the um the haters yeah. by any means, no matter what you're doing. Because you could thinking about this the other week, you could be writing like the best, you know, hypothetically the best music ever, and you've put everything into it, and you're incredibly happy with it. But someone's always gonna, you know, 
disagree with some part of it or they're not going to like it. And that's just, I get that's just part of the whole thing and part of the whole purpose of why you're doing it. Cause you're, I guess you're trying to create, well, I think you're trying to create something that, that resonates with you. Um, and that's why, you know, reading, even like the reading YouTube, YouTube comments thing, um, that can influence your subconscious when you're younger. It definitely happened when I was a bit younger. Like it could be like the smallest thing. And then when you're writing it, just all of a sudden you kind of, it, it can enter your psyche of like, of what you're trying to do with this song. Cause you like, you might remember someone just being, having too much of an opinion about some particular thing. Like I can't even think of an example, um, but like, it could just be, um, I think I know I what you're of kind of, I, I know what you're yeah. saying. It feels like it invades the writing process a bit. Like sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, if you're young and and you can be influenced a bit harder, like say you know, especially now with Instagram, and especially now with all the plugins you can get. I was watching like one of Misha's, um, like Horizon Devices riff contests last night. I put it on for like five minutes before I was about to head out, and it's just ridiculously stupid how good everybody is now especially on like that lower tier um prog instrumental kind of thing like this everyone's just ridiculously good um i forget why i said that there was a reason to that um to do with uh avoiding sort of avoiding haters and and sort of um forging your own path through that yes I cannot remember anymore, which is awesome. It is too early. <laughs> it's too early for you and too late for me to remember. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to go great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, 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 I kind of, um, I know what you mean though. It is thing is like young, like not young, um, not always young musicians. It often is though. The prog world is not like an easy one, um, to, to kind of be a part of, or even just sort of be watching. Because everyone's so good, like technically good. Forget if they write anything cool. It's like the the standard, the audio standard is high. Like it's all mega produced. Like I don't know how these guys have the time to be great guitar players, write cool riffs, and then like so I'm, I'm a guitarist myself, and then and then produce it that well as well. You're like, how do you have time for all this? <laughs> no, I, um, mm. I like, I, mm. I feel like by the time I've gone to my kitchen and made a coffee, it's like midday. I'm like, what? <laughs> how, and how have you got time to do all this? Like, get all this stuff in. It's setting a really high standard for, for everyone. So I don't think anyone's helping by contributing to the, the haters' comments for sure. Um, well, mm. what, who was what? um was this a competition? Did you say? Yeah, it was just like a riff competition for Horizon yeah. Devices, but it really highlighted the point that the accessibility to, to at least pr produce something well now is, you know, with all the plugins that I kind of like pre mixed that it's yeah. allowing younger and younger people to post some really accessible stuff on social media and YouTube. But then so this is what I was actually meant to be talking about surrounding that was the influence that the younger kid get from a lot of their music kind of only being posted online and that influence of, I guess, yeah, just those comments ent entering your psyche. And if you don't have a great mental health as a, as a kid or your purpose of writing this is to get likes as a kid or something like that, then it can really kind of, I reckon it could just, if you just, I know, yeah, a bit fragile with that mental health, it can really affect your development into the purpose of why you're doing that or something like I could imagine that for me when I was a kid, um, didn't really have that option as a kid, but I could imagine if I was like 14 and I had all this stuff, it's like, Oh cool. I can make a riff that sounds like really like, you know, I can know how to produce it and whatever. Um, that could be confusing, um, growing up like yeah. with that. Well, I've kind of, I, it's like this whole, I noticed there's, I was talking to Tim Mills um, from Bare Knuckle Pickups about this, how there's this kind of this, um, like, weirdly, there's a bit of a, like, influencer culture, even in, like, the guitar and bass and drum world, among other, there are other instruments, but, like, from what I've 
been exposed to there's a bit of, it does feel like in, in some there's some positive stuff to it you know like that there's a good sense of community and i you know i've met people that i get on really well with now and who i share a passion with but then it does feel a bit like you know when you see influencers and they're just promoting like the latest clothes or or like the latest technology whatever and it's just like you don't need it it's just like leave leave me alone i'm not interested in that but then when it gets into a world that you're really passionate about it can be it, i don't know i feel sometimes it, it's it's difficult because there's so many musicians out there that want to make it as a musician that when they get the chance to they, I've, I've noticed people if you put a product out people will advertise it for you you don't need to pay anyone they'll just because they want to get the shares to be on your page so like people will advertise this they'll do a playthrough and just post it and tag you you know and um and it's great because it builds community but then it's like um it almost creates this kind of influencer culture and then you suddenly music is just becoming a bit of like a sound bite more than a song mm. and in if you're trying to write prog music you can't do much in 30 <laughs> seconds you know <laughs> um so um yeah, yeah it's a difficult kind of um it, it, it's a difficult world to be in i think i'm saying this having not really been in any other musical world i'm not really old enough to uh <laughs> <laughs> say otherwise but um but yeah so because do you, you i've seen you work with uh is it like dark glass um i've seen you do some stuff with them what's your experience of kind of working with with these companies it must be quite cool being sort of involved with the, the people who make the things that you're you're playing right yeah for sure um all the companies we work with, Dark Glass, Dingwall, and Newell DSP, they're yeah. all um, just really great to work with in a way that help and you know really accessible and, and kind of you know supporting what we do. Um, the main point is is that we're doing something a bit different, and um, these companies definitely support what we do and they believe in us. And just that, you know, having them there is is just great uh even without the gear i suppose but the gear's there too but, you know mm. just having them supporting us like in our vision is, is um this is really it's a really nice thing to have um we typically get a lot of uh if we if we work with industry typically it's a lot of bass players it just happens mm. to be that way i think our first two booking agents were bass players Oh, really? and just like just think and like and our, one of our pr guys was like a bass player it just happened for some reason for no reason there's <laughs> no point connection. yeah 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 <laughs> it's just like it just happened to be the guy that we went to was yeah playing bass um the person holding everything together <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> yeah i guess that's that's uh where we sit with our <laughs> bass plays but um yeah yeah having companies who support your vision is really great especially in the position um that we're in in terms of what we're making um yeah it's just so different and, and they allow us to do our own thing and, and you know not have to uh i think that's why we can um why we might have a good relationship with those companies is because we can advertise that product in a different way but mm. more so it just allows us to kind of really uh tap into all these different things whether um it's with the new dsp plugins like the guitar ones and just um seeing how they sound in bass because there's a lot of cool stuff that you can just apply to a bass you can turn off like half of the things within the plugin and then um just use like a little bit of it that's like for example like i haven't used it yet but like the tim henson um oh, yeah. multi-voice thing you like we can just turn everything else off just or we can use some stuff on but just use that especially with like a macbook uh m1 chip like computer it can handle it now mm um crazy my old computer couldn't do that i can turn on like so many archer type my plugins. my my fan is whirring right now and we're just having a zoom call <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. yeah shit i mean my computer's okay now i got a new one like late last year but um it's very important for the creative process because you i literally had to limit myself i, I was i wasn't lim limited to myself my computer was because i couldn't add a certain amount of um tracks or a certain amount of plugins or have the song too long because as soon as the song started being too long it would just I, it wouldn't play you'd mm. get like maximum system like, overload I yeah get that you, you'd be able to hear like eight seconds yeah of um of the song and that's it my mine does this thing <laughs> where if i if i have like 
a few guitar tracks and some drums. It's fine, like Logic drums, like just the the inbuilt ones. When I start using like GGD or something, and bear in mind this is 2019 MacBook, so clearly they're just trying to phase. They're trying to they're trying something because it's only like three years old, um, mm. and it will just start slowing down. And I'm like, oh, it's starting, and then it starts crackling, and then the whole thing it just just the music just sort of falls into the void. I don't know what happens. Like it just stops. <laughs> it just stops sounding yeah. like what what was there. Um, so the fact a three year old MacBook is struggling with that is not great. Um, I don't know if they're trying to get me onto the yeah, next you, one in in three years. Yeah, the M1 chip. I don't know if you heard about that, but that's yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. that's sick. Yeah, for some reason, whatever new technology. Again, it's just new technology that is making creating music far too easy. So yeah. Like, well, this, so okay, yeah. so weird. Okay, so here's something that I do that I'd be interested to hear what you think. Um, so I'm trying to now, and this is a bit contrary to some stuff because actually I, I go on Twitch a little bit, but I'm trying to um, avoid looking at this, having a screen in front of me when I'm trying to be creative. I feel like I just, whatever it is, I, I think I associate it with either working um, or like dossing about or kind of like we're just relaxing or whatever. So I, what I like to do is I have a space in the other side of my room now where I just have my sofa and a little Yamaha practice amp. It still sounds pretty good. Um, and I'm trying to use that as my creative space now because I feel like the technology is great and, and it can like aid the process once you've, in my head, it can aid the process once you've created something. Um, but I find something about staring at a screen I find just inhibits my creativity. Um, but the way the world is, like I'm trying to do Twitch as well now to try and you know, just be more involved with everything. So it's so hard to avoid it. But do you find that kind of having the screen in front of you, do you find that like hurts the creativity or are you, are you fine with kind of just writing and having, having the, the setup in front of you? Hmm. Or if I just made you think about it? <laughs> yeah. I, if I've got a computer in front of me and I'm playing bass, it's, it's usually, like in Pro Tools, it's not, um, I'm not like watching something or I'm not, uh, Oh, I'm even the same, but I'm, I'm saying even just having the screen there is what I'm saying. Mm. It's weird. Mm. Yeah. I haven't tried that, uh, actively tried that. I'm sure I've done it quite a few times, but, um, yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. Perhaps, I don't know, not really can't super relate to that, but yeah. I definitely I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's cool because I guess as soon as you open up your door and you're plugged in and even if you have like a little bit of an idea, if you don't have an idea, there's this goal that you're going to create something right then and there. But yeah, then if you haven't got the screen there and you're just plugged into an amp, I guess there is no expectation um, of what you come out with uh, creatively, I suppose, or um, you know, there might be an expectation, but there's a, I don't know, you, you haven't got this blank, you're not staring at yeah. the blank page, um, which I think is what you're talking about. You're kind of, yeah. I guess, more, uh, more within your own body like and an instrument in your mind rather than, um, that one. yeah, trying to fill the blank space on your, on your computer for sure. Um, that does make sense. Yeah. It's just, it's something I've been kind of playing around with. It might be a bit of a sort of, um, might be a bit of a just a road to nowhere. I don't really know. Maybe it's a bit, it's just a bit pointless. But I, I think it's a lot to do with. I live in a flat, and my window's over there, and so it's brighter over there. <laughs> I mm. think maybe, mm. maybe subconsciously, I'm just like, oh, sunlight. I need that. I'm a musician. I suppose I'm a musician. Maybe I don't need sunlight. Um, but yeah, I, I, <laughs> no, you need it, man. You need it. Whatever feels good, bro. And also, yeah. yeah. And also, you'd be less inclined to when you have a screen in front of you. You've got the goblin pose of like the the guitar or the bass on your lap and you're kind of leaning over the computer yeah and your posture is just like oh i lean this way now like yeah. the worst you, you what sir i lean like this way now like i'm wonky <laughs> you would, oh yeah 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 naturally yeah naturally i stand slightly to the left yeah the whole upper half of my body is slightly to the left because i've trained it for 13 years i suppose with that. with with like with bass i'm surprised your shoulders aren't like this from like playing you know like having to play up here it's naturally sitting yeah uh, yeah there's 
we've got some funky stuff going on, but it's all part of, um, now it's all part of warming up. I'm not that yeah. old, but my body is not the greatest thing in the world. Um, in terms of my back and my wrist and had a lot of back and wrist issues. Um, so I now integrate a lot of like active warm ups before shows and, um, or before rehearsals, like before each set, I've, I've kind of saw some physios and, and just kind of alongside that, but also develop my own kind of warm up routine so that I can do that. Um, and, you know, as soon as I get sore, I get, I get grumpy. And as soon as I get grumpy, I either play like shit or I feel like shit and it just makes me not enjoy it. Yeah. So it's become a crucial thing for me to be in a comfortable environment which um yeah is kind of you know i guess it's part of what you're talking about with having your own space over there compared yeah. to in front of a desk and a screen yeah and i think um also because um something that I, I was interested in with your uh, again with approaching a band where there's two bass players and a drummer um is are you conscious when you're writing of kind of obviously you've now got a lot more space right as 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 i say a bass player you're like the well the two of you playing sort of playing the bass but um are you kind of conscious okay how how are we gonna like fill this space more so again more so than say a conventional guitar drums bass vocals kind of band um do you have like an active way of thinking about like how you're going to sort of fill that musical space or is it more is do you write a bit more freely than that is it just a case of if it sounds good it is good kind of thing there's definitely if, if if it sounds good it is good it's a yeah. big part of, of what we do um and we've been doing this for so long now that our expectation is what we have um and like it's not like we just listen to bass outside of writing for the band but um you know our, we have a certain vision that can become more clear or less clear depending on our moods and what's going on in our lives um in terms of what we're trying to make this sound like. Um, sometimes we want it to be quite big and sometimes, like sometimes you do just want like that low, whatever, like a low E or something, which isn't a conventional thing on, on a guitar. Like sometimes you want the riff to just be down in that bass register, but then sometimes we do want it to be bigger and you'd put an, another layer up the octave or you do an octave pedal, even then much the octave pedal stuff yet um but it's honestly just if it sounds good it is good because the way you can interpret our music is so uh you can just interpret it in so many ways i feel from your background of understanding music because it is just with a niche within a niche um within the niche probably um, <laughs> several niches so yeah 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 so your understanding of the music changes so um for us it's just like again as i was saying i think um a little bit ago is um if it sounds good it is good because it just needs to feel good for us because um yeah you can just interpret it so many ways like even like the techniques it's like um if someone who wouldn't know what like thumping is or take it back another step for someone who doesn't know what slap faces like i guess that's not out market but there's that you know there's people who would listen to the music and not even understand what the hell is going on so there's no you know point in um in that so just whatever sounds good is good to us because yeah it's it's, it's nothing not more important than otherwise that. yeah you don't want to go on stage and, and kind of i guess backtrack into that idea of making stuff more commercial shitting yourself on stage feeling right yeah <laughs> that's the one <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, just, yeah, elaborate response to um, to the answer. Of elaborate is good. We good like elaborate. Good. It's the whole point of chatting. Yeah, man, I'll talk forever three, if you want me to. More than three minutes, yeah. Um, yeah, because I, I thought what was cool was, I, I, I think um, the the temptation for a lot of people again, approaching the, the ba a band structure in the way that you guys have it structured is that there, there's always that, that there would be that temptation to be like, almost use the idea that it's two bassists and a drummer and be like yeah this is our thing but then throw in like 12 other instruments but just a bit further back whereas actually quite a lot of what you do is quite exposed 
Um, and I think uh, I think I quite admire that you, the, essentially the music has to be good. It sounds like an obvious one. Obviously, the music's got to be good, but like it's not like it's hiding behind um, loads of other things. I, I love it when like the synth layers. I, I, is it synth layers that come in in places where you kind of fill? It, it feels like you're filling out the sound, but you're not taking away from the core style that you've approached. Because I think the temptation. I think if I if I were to approach it. Um, I think I'd go, yeah, two bassists, but then I'd like throw in a million other things and then it would kind of take away from the whole point of why you did it in the first place, you know? Um, so I think that's, uh, I don't really know what my question was with that. I was, yes, I was just saying it was quite cool. <laughs> um, um, it kind of ties in with how do you think about your your approach to, to writing this stuff? Um, w again, is that something that you've been conscious of or or is it just how, again, is it just how you kind of felt that you wanted the music to sound? Because like I said, you could you could throw in a million and one instruments as like layers on top of all this stuff, but actually, it's you've kept it quite sort of a you've kept to your core sound, if you like. Um, mm, um, yeah, me and Matt work a little bit differently, but I think we try to understand each other's visions when we write. Um, usually, we haven't done a lot of like writing. A whole song together i don't think we've actually done that it's usually like he brings up 70 to 80 percent of the song and then we finish that together and here's his vision of how all of his synth layers um kind of um work into that song and then i try and also put my vision of how i'm hearing that you know just like just like writing is you're trying to you're trying to create this vision of, of, of something that he's bringing up and then the same thing with me but because i'm I record a lot of my ideas initially. I probably got more of a foundation already of exactly how I want something to be, and it might already be made. Whereas we have to make everything from scratch for him. Um, but I guess it's just like any. <laughs> I know it just makes sense to me about writing any any music. Like we don't do it any differently. It's it's just more so what is interesting and what is um, engaging um sometimes i've done that in the past i'll literally completely frankenstein a song that i've written for like two weeks straight like i'm talking about like every night after work and and on weekends and i'm frankensteining every section to make sure as a piece of work it's like engaging enough to me um even though i expect everything to come up um and so that comes along with where we do add the synths and we do add the background layers and where we don't. Um, yeah. Yeah, it just, I don't know, it's just like writing any music where you just have our own perceptions of how how we want to build it and they'll change song to song and section to section. But luckily we got, you know, the, the tools to be able to make the vision close enough. Um, but yeah, bass is always the book. Yeah, yeah, it's usually like close enough. I can, I'm always close enough. I gave up mixing because it's always like it's close enough, but it's not 100% there. So it's very similar to um, how our demos end up sounding. So I don't mix it, but um, yeah, bass is always the focal point, I guess. Um, but it's not like an active thought, it's just mm. natural. Because just how it comes about, yeah. <laughs> I think that's, I guess yeah. that's kind of how it almost has to be because you don't want to. I think people would see right through it if you were trying to be, if you're trying to force that kind of sound and that image. Um, but you just, you just brought up something that was actually interesting because I was looking through your, um, sort of through your website and your, and your sort of discography and it said that you engineered, uh, I can't remember which, which particular song that I saw it come up. Or I don't know if it, um, but how much engineering have you kind of done of your own songs? So we've, um, we've, I've done all of the engineering for all of our, you know, albums or well, EPs mm. and albums. Um, apart from one song, the cuneiform script, I don't think I did anything for that. Mm. That was like right after our first EP. Um, and because we tried to go with, um, you know, an actual engineer that we, um, a local engineer, actually he does. It was Lance Prank who does um, like Alpha Wolf and he engineered the Polaris 
record. Cool. Okay. Anyway, he's a local guy who's who's really smashing it now. But we did like a song with him. Um, but I think from doing that and from anyone that we've worked with externally to me, Matt, and Jerome, um, <laughs> whenever we work with someone external, they definitely bring something to the table, but it also kind of reinforces the vision that we had originally for like next time we work on something. It's kind of like, it's really interesting, but it's usually a really good learning point um, when we get someone else involved. Um, like, um, so yeah, I've produced all the bass stuff apart from that one song. Um, and every time we attempt to get someone else involved, we realize that we are the ones who know what it needs to sound like. Um, and it's actually just, it, it takes a while, but it's like, it's quicker and more efficient and um, we can get the vision that we want because yeah, rather than getting more people involved, it's again, it's just so niche and mm. I, you'd have to, re- we would have to really trust someone to, to bring it to its full fruition, um, at least right at the moment. So mm. like the next record will produce um, and I'll record the whole thing and all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, yeah. That's how we do it. Just me fucking around and (laughs) figuring it out literally from just the six years of experience that we've had writing this stuff. (laughs) Yeah, because it's um, it's one thing letting a producer in on your hard on your hard work and letting them sort of fiddle around with things, you know, with song structures and all this stuff. It's another thing when you again when you when you approach when you have a, a less traditional band sort of structure and sound. That's a whole other thing. Like you've got to find the right person to have their say in your music. Otherwise you could end up, well, like we were saying, you can end up sounding like quite commercial almost by accident just because someone else um, had their say, you know? So I guess there's, there's a lot to be said for standing, sort of standing strong in what, in your opinions about what you want to do. Um, do, do you, um, do you often sort of put the music out there to like sort of trusted friends and musicians and see like, do, do you sort of, you know, before you've released it, you go, have a listen to this, see what you think. And d- d- does does it end up changing from anyone that you kind of end up showing it to? We usually keep it pretty internal. Mm. Um, I'll show a few of my friends, um, but it's not like a, it's not like a, uh, a quality control kind of thing. Um, it's more just like, Hey, this is cool. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but on the last record I did show a few, uh, just some small things to a few people where I was stuck and I was like, Hey, I'm kind of stuck on this. Can you help me? But usually me and Matt, after we've worked on something, if there's something that we're stuck with, we might try and get another opinion, um, from a close friend. Um, if we like, it's just something that we can't figure out, but usually we try and figure it out ourselves and yeah, we'd usually only go to that point when we're on the shore. Um, Otherwise, we're pretty sure that we like it and and whatever. It's not yeah, not a common practice. Yeah. Have you got any um? Have you got any kind of pieces of songs or riffs or ideas that that are stuck in that part at the moment where you're like, it's great, but I just can't make it work. I'm guessing that's a yes. <laughs> yeah, dude. I have way too much. Like, I just I don't even remember them all. I need a yeah. I need a better filing system for this shit. <laughs> I did yeah, it is just too many. I reckon I've got like twenty five one minute things. Um yeah. that's on top of all the songs that I've um actually already put forward to the band for the next record. But it's like yeah, that I yeah, I've got a lot of ideas that I need to again, I need to I need to part of my creative process is actually kind of being disciplined with myself to give myself the um perspective of hearing the song and kind of fresh and otherwise when i don't hear it fresh or i'm kind of like i know i i re- try to be really disciplined with myself about how i approach the structure like i wrote three of the songs i wrote for the last record i literally each of those took two weeks two weeks from um from when i started trying to write the song to when i and I'm like, okay, I'm going to show the guys to like literally two whole weeks of like kind of every night, every um, weekend until I was like, okay, cool. I can show the guys now. And then it changes from there as well. Um, but for some reason that worked 
and I'm trying to not do that because it's pretty taxing being that intense about mm. how to be. But I don't know. It's I had just had this deep feeling that I needed to. I needed to create something that I was really, really happy with, um, and that it made sense. A lot of what we do is trying to make things make sense. <laughs> I guess what a lot of musicians, <laughs> in their own way, kind of uh, everyone's doing that in their own way in some some shape or form. Um, do do you find that? Do you have a high bar for yourself for um, what kind of um, makes what makes the cut? I, I guess it'd be to. almost offensive if I said, well, you clearly don't. <laughs> well, yeah, I think this is an, this for some reason sparked an interesting thought that I was thinking about last night when mm. I was thinking about what we could talk about was um, it was kind of like the expectation of how much work you need to put into your craft. So into the bass or writing music um, or yeah, yeah, just playing on stage how much effort you need to put in. This is uh, for some reason, this is a thought I used to have as a kid, how much effort you need to put in before you can stop caring about it. This is like a weird thought that I used to have a kid. And I don't know if this is just me, but it was like, I thought there would be a point in my life where I could stop caring about being good at bass. Cause I was already, I was, I was good at bass or stop caring about um, writing a good song because I've written enough good songs to know that I can write a good song. Mm. But I found as soon as I think I've hit that point, I just, it just kind of falls apart. And I don't think that that exists. I think you can be calmer about how you approach those things, but I don't think that exists because the focus and the attention and kind of the effort um, always has to be there for me to achieve a product that I am happy with. Um, it can, yeah, it will go from writing a song or, or literally like playing on stage. Like I have to, yeah, I used to have this expectation that I'd get to a point where I could stop caring. Um, but I didn't, I don't think any of this. And so, um, I always really need to focus on, on just what I'm doing in that moment. And I guess that's just about being present. Um, mm. There's something well, said about being be present, I think. Like, it's very easy to be thinking about... I don't just mean distracted, like, it's easy, anyone, anyone gets distracted, but I find it very easy to be thinking about, like, before I've even finished writing the little 30-second riff section that I'm working on right now, I'm worrying about whether this song is going to be good enough. And I'm just like, I haven't even let myself finish this one riff yet, let alone the whole song, you know? Um, mm -hmm. It's very easy to... Um, and I think that there's a sort of sad irony in that, like, if you do stop caring and stop stressing to an extent, I think that the art would suffer for it, you know, because you then suddenly the bar drops and you, you know, even without you maybe realizing. Um, but I think there's healthy stress, you know, like there's, there's, I think, I think you can be stressed in a positive way. Um, like, do, do you feel like you kind of deal well with that sort of pressure? Um, it really just depends. Life always changes. Sometimes it's mm. easier, sometimes it's a bit harder, really. That's the best explanation yeah. um, that I've found that I can give myself is that, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> good place, Things yeah. just always change. Yeah, my mood always changes. Uh, my methods always change. My perspective mm. always changes. So, yeah. yeah, I always find I, I write the best when I'm like... I found, I have this weird thing. I don't know if this is something that you get, and I don't know. I haven't actually. I've realised I haven't asked anyone this on the podcast yet. Um, I I get this thing where if I write something really good, I get like, it, oh, really good by my by my standards. You know, I um I get excited about it to the point where like I actually have to stop and just leave it because I'm too just like oh this is really good. I get really like pumped, and then I have to just like record it so it's there, and then I have to just sit like just like stop <laughs> just because i can't focus like i just um i guess it's just that excitement of like whoa this is really cool and i don't know if that's just me but like i feel like in my head i'm like i should just be able to keep writing when you're in that zone it's like i feel like you should it's that flow state isn't it you know where you want to be as creative as you can in that time because that's when you're the most like 
razor's edge focus kind of and but i just find i get so hyped up once i've written a cool riff that i have to just stop i have to sit and like just have a drink <laughs> not like an alcoholic mm. drink although i suppose that would help <laughs> um <laughs> just like a coffee no, or so, like, not that cof- coffee wouldn't help would it jeez i'm doing it the wrong way around um is that just a me <laughs> thing i don't know i'm guessing it is no that i definitely resonate with that and that's yeah. kind of what i was talking about with like i guess the discipline I try, I have given myself in the past when writing a song is like, I try to not get too excited about it. That's mm. a pretty accurate way of how I would describe it. And I would try to, to always listen to it as little as possible, but write it as much as possible. Yeah. Um, because as soon as I, I listen to that. it too much, you get stuck. Yeah. It's literally a discipline, man. And I'm not great at it all the time, but it's like, if I try and set it, it has worked, but it's um yeah yeah I completely resonate with that. Yeah, it's a weird one. Like, it's not it's not like a it's not like a bad thing. I don't think it really. It, it, I think it's maybe bad in the sense that I need to just calm down and go right. Okay, you're in a good place. Like in in this moment in time, like you're in a good music. You've just written a really cool riff. Let's make the most of this time. And I think in my head, I have to just be like, well, that's me done for today. <laughs> like, it just, uh, it's just like, well, job done. Go yeah. Have, well, that's it, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah. It's not, not in a lazy way. I think it's in a like, you know, I don't mean that in the sense of like, cool. That's today's writing. See you later. Play video games. I mean, like, I, I think mentally my bro- I get too excited when I- maybe I need to write more good things and I'll get less excited when I do. <laughs> and that's probably, the- <laughs> that's probably the way forward. <laughs> I would guess. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to fix my problems. Right, I had okay. I had a question. So you've there's a song, and I don't even know how to pronounce it. I think I think I maybe do. Is it Scurry Funge? Yeah, yeah that is how you pronounce it. What does that mean? Um, I believe that is the. It is the. I think it's um. When you're about to leave to go out and it's kind of like the the act of really quickly getting everything ready to go out um, oh whatever you're doing whatever you're not specifically going out to anything but just like yeah. it's literally the act of literally like rushing out the door um in five minutes like you know you're running late or whatever yeah is that is there kind of like a um sort of a, a deep and meaningful meaning behind that or is it just something that you felt represented that the music yeah i think um it just kind of represents that song. It's yeah. it's quite hard and, and fast and, and kind yeah. of has, it's, it's got the swing throughout most of it. And it's, so it's always kind of like to da 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 um, when you break it down like that. So it's, it kind of just represented the um, franticness that the song is. <laughs> okay, got real English teacher syndrome on this, you know, like um, if you wanted to, you know, start just like analyzing the very, every detail of the word, every letter, how it represents, how it's represented in the music. <laughs> or not <laughs> but, um um yeah because is that is that like that's got to be an aussie word because i i've not heard that um yeah i haven't heard it before as well some of the names of the songs just comes up with um with matt just kind of googling <laughs> for you know from this word to this word to this word to this word Thesaurus.com is your friend that's that's yeah i mean yeah yeah it usually uh yeah it might change in the future again things change about how we go about naming stuff but yeah. sometimes matt will just google because he's um he can be um quite spe- specific about how um how he wants the word or a name of a song to be yeah i guess it means it's i suppose it's kind of subconsciously it, it has that effect doesn't it just nate especially when you haven't got any lyrics in your songs the name if anything has more weight maybe than it did than it does for mm. songs with lyrics in them i guess so I guess you have got to think mm. about it quite a bit. Come to think of it, it's quite cool. Yeah. Um, I was just interested because I'd not heard the word before, so I had to ask what, what, what it, um, what it meant. But um, speaking of sort of Aussie kind of Aussie versus U um UK and sort of Europe US, it's obviously a, it's a, it's physically a long way away. Um, do you feel is there like it almost sort of does it sometimes feel a little bit distant where you are compared to say the us or or europe because I, I sometimes feel even in the uk that the us is the place to be you know um as a musician um 
does it ever feel like a little sort of distant in that way or is there quite or and is there quite a self-contained kind of music industry um of, well of course i know of course there there is but like um do you feel that there's enough strength in the industry there itself that um that a band could sort of basically survive without touring overseas and all that mm, mm. i think it changes from uh from genre to genre yeah. but touring in australia isn't the easiest thing because we only have um five or six capital cities so they're the main parts you hear and sometimes like on our last tour we only hit three of them and you still call that an australian tour brisbane mm -hmm. sydney melbourne yeah. um which is just the east coast and there's a lot of you know empty space in australia in the middle but um yeah yeah if you're trying to, to if you're trying to financially find your life financially from touring in australia it can be definitely not the easiest thing um because of that and you got to fly between each city because you can't you can't hire a bus uh, like you would in America or Europe. Um, yeah, so it becomes hard on that um, if you're talking about specifically touring. Um, but again, people have done it that mm. they can kind of stay in Australia. Um, but apart from that, I mean, a lot of the industry is, you know, in America, in, um, you know, in LA and stuff, but um, it just really depends on what you want to do and who you want to work with because it's, yeah, as you touched on, there's, there's a bunch of great, um, people here in Australia, um, and I suppose industry in Australia of, um, people just making great music that you can, you know, work with and, and bounce off. And, um, and I suppose that's what bands are doing as well as they'll head over to America or Europe with another Australian band. So you've got, so you've got a band to share the, the bus with and um and you know you can kind of slightly bounce off each other to do that um to kind of grow in that way yeah i guess it just depends if you're talking about financially or or um and actually growing your band but the, the speaking about that there is a slight expectation that um that american bands are bigger than australian bands in terms of like they'll get the tours in the us more often like the bigger tours with the bigger bands because they're circulating more up there where we get them basically lately we haven't really got much at all but um you know we get them much less and it's only for three or four shows i find that so frustrating missing out on or like i've for example like um alter bridge are my favorite band and i don't think i've seen them advertise a, like australia new zealand kind of tour i don't think i've seen that at all mm which would really frustrate me. I'd be seeing them like every night if they, if they came over, you know, just cause I'd just be like, well, this is it. Like, <laughs> you know, yeah. Who's yeah, are there any artists that you've missed that you've not seen? Cause they just haven't done an Australia tour. Is there like a, a one artist that you just kill, like would die to see, but they haven't come over yet. Um, I mean, I haven't thought about that much because of COVID, but I guess like a oh, band yeah. like spirit box would be great to see. Um, yeah just because they're, they're cool. cool and you know they're new and cool but they haven't been over here um i'm, I'm sure, I'm they, sure they will with what they're doing now so um but yeah it's i know you just kind of live with it <laughs> <laughs> you just no, hope I the shows just, don't I sell out that. Because, <laughs> yeah What's, it's yeah i was gonna so have you have you played in the uk before um we've, i think we've played one show in the uk but whereabouts? Do you remember? Brighton. Oh, cool! You literally went to like the f the closest you could get in the UK to Australia. <laughs> You're like, we got that's it. We refuse to go any further. Uh, yeah, Brighton's we're in cool. like a. Yeah, it was cool. Um, that was our first Europe tour with um interviews and C two A. Um, mm. did I say interviews or intervals? Uh, I think you said interviews. That's awesome. Intervals and um c2a and yeah it was mostly a europe tour but we yeah. went into the uk for one show um <laughs> chatted to um jacob the other not that long ago actually jacob um Imanski. yeah uh, so that was cool small again small world um other side yeah, of the world guy, but... yeah yeah no he's awesome he he's yeah. the guy who helped me kind of get my legs or get me running on something stuff um 
he literally because I could I could always kind of thump but he kind of he showed me just in the sound checked how he was just playing my bass I think and he was thumping and I was like oh okay and just seeing it in the flesh like right there I was like okay and so for like the next two hours while there was delays in the show and, and sound check and stuff I just was thumping and thumping and then I eventually got it but Jacob's yeah. awesome he's um he's very very good and he's just very lovely yeah he was awesome to chat too um yeah so i think the what so like i said what what we did at the beginning of the obviously the podcast is getting you answer the question from the last guest to sort of get get it's nice it's nice to have the conversation flow you know from one guest to the next so um if you can think of anything to say oh well i'm gonna put you on the spot you gotta think of something to say <laughs> to <laughs> the next person to and it could be absolutely anything there's no um ideally nothing about shitting yourself on stage would be nice um takes the pressure off of me somewhat <laughs> um, to know how to ask that but you know i will promise to ask whatever question you deem worthy um and mm. also um need you to recommend uh an up-and-coming or sort of underground band that you think needs a bit of a bit of promo and deserves a bit of love Okay. Just to be nice okay. to them. Mm. Um, okay. I think I need to stop putting people on the spot. <laughs> oh, it's okay. It's okay. Um, okay. Um, and they can't, to be fair, actually, in terms of bands, I'm not that strict with the rules. Like it can be someone that's well known as long as they've done something cool that you want, that you think people should hear about, you know, recently. Yeah, for sure. I think. I mean, they're not really underground, but mm -hmm. Thornhill are awesome. Um, those yeah. guys from Melbourne. Um, those are guys people should definitely check out. They're doing like that new school, old school kind of new metal. Uh, I need to give them more of a listen. Kind of stuff. Yeah, I think give them a chance. They're, they're, for some reason for me, they're one of those bands that will release a song and I won't like it. And then I'll like it the second time I've heard it. Mm. Um, Cliffy are the same for me. Yeah. Um, I I'm, I listen to the song and I'm kind of underwhelmed. And then I'll listen to it the second time. I'm like, I just for some reason get it. It's so bizarre. Yeah. Um, but well, it's not simple similar. music, is it? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, yeah. But um, yeah, Thornhill are great. Um, and a question for the next. Or it can even be just a statement. It doesn't have to be a question. Like it can be yeah, a statement, I'll... statement, agree or disagree. <laughs> yeah. You can put me on the spot. You can throw me in the deep end. Say whatever. I'll say the next, I'll say it to the next person. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying this. You know, I'm just, in, I'm just egging you on to say something even worse than this one. Um, I guess I'm just trying to figure out how I can word this. Um, what vibe are we going for? I, I want to go super deep philosophical. Yeah, go on. I haven't like, had a deep one yet. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I'm just trying to think about exactly which one because I think about mm. this stuff a lot. Um, it's tricky. Yeah, maybe um, what was you... the... Oh, go on. Yeah? Okay. Um, what has been the most mentally taxing... Uh, experience of your music career and did you how long did it take you to get away from that experience um, like did you like walk away or did you did you stay there for a few years um, yeah and something that you wish that you actually left um, sooner or something yeah so like just how did you get away from it kind of like or or, or have you I guess is the yeah thing. yeah Maybe basically yeah, yeah 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 or just yeah yeah just what's the hardest um yeah 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 Mentally, well I think that's a good question because it's like it it's uh it throws me in the the deep end in that sense a good pun um but uh but yeah it's um it's a good I'm, I'm now see now you've said that I need to look at my calendar and see who my next guest is it's tomorrow <laughs> so cool okay I'll um you'll have to you'll have to check out check out your own podcast when when it goes out so you can hear, oh well not yours the next one so you can uh so you can hear the answer um but yeah thank you man if you if you have anything you want to kind of uh promote to the world and 
and plug, then then go ahead. Now now's your chance. Um, I think I just want if you're listening to this, um, be kind to yourself as a musician and don't be too hard on yourself, and just do the the music and the playing for yourself, not for anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a nice... See, most people there will just plug their band. So the fact that you've ended with a... Actually, you know what? You and the last... The very last guest I had before you, who just who just said uh, about asking you if you chat yourself on stage, um, said a, uh, a similar kind of thing, but only you two have. So hmm. there you go. That's a nice... It's a nice message to yeah. end on. Yeah. I think it's <laughs> nice to... That's why I think it's nice to chat to... You know, just get try and get a feel for like chatting to you as a person more than you know you as a musician, because I think that's a more important thing for people to take away. And even then, it's like, well, whatever we talk about, it's people getting a window into you, however silly it might be at times. You know, um, so yeah. thank you for chatting, and um, it's a, a lovely message to end on. So um, you've you've given me a much more much more hope for the next guest at the beginning of the uh, <laughs> beginning of the podcast so thank you um so yeah cool we'll wrap it up there thanks very much great thanks joe <laughs>